Historically, the Kissimmee-Okeechobee Everglades watershed began just south of Orlando in the Kissimmee Chain of Lakes. From there, water flowed south through the beautiful Kissimmee River. The historic river was 103 miles long and meandered across a one to two mile wide floodplain that supported diverse wetland plant, fish, and wildlife communities. For humans, the winding river served as an important route for trade and for travel, but the journey was not an easy one. Steamboats carrying supplies and people would often get stuck on sandbars or tangled in vegetation and would have to be pulled by the crew and even passengers into deeper water. For wildlife, the river and its wide floodplain served as critical habitat for an incredible and diverse food web, rich in aquatic invertebrates, amphibians, reptiles, fish, wading birds, and waterfowl. One of the hidden values of the historic Kissimmee River and floodplain was the slow moving waters that were filtered by the wetland vegetation. The wide floodplain provided surface water storage during storms and the wetland plants filtered nutrients and added oxygen to the water column that helped to improve the river's water quality. Surface waters would also seep into the ground and recharge our underground aquifers. Aquifers are the main source of drinking water in southern Florida. In the 1940s and 50s, there were several hurricanes with dangerous floods that prompted residents to cry out for flood control. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, in charge of flood control, determined that the best way to provide flood control in the region was to channelize the Kissimmee River. The project was undertaken before the establishment of environmental impact assessments that would have protected the environment. From 1962 to 1971, the slow-moving, 103-mile meandering Kissimmee River was transformed by dredging a 56-mile-long drainage canal called the C-38 Canal that quickly funneled water from the chain of lakes down to Lake Okeechobee. The river flowed south from Lake Kissimmee near Orlando and discharged into Lake Okeechobee to slow down the river's flow and maintain control of the channelized system. The C-38 Canal was divided into a series of five pools with six dams to control the volume and speed of the river's flow. The channelized C-38 Canal, which was 300 feet wide and 30 feet deep, did not provide littoral zone habitat for native fishes to breed or wading birds to forage. This caused a cascade of issues. The native fish populations crashed and forced the wading birds to leave the area in search of more abundant prey. The river's wetland habitats that once thrived with invertebrates, small fish, birds, and wildlife were drained and everything changed. Ranchers grazed beef cattle on the now dry floodplain. The once abundant wading birds were replaced by the exotic cattle egret and upland plant species. The Kissimmee River wasn't the only part of our watershed that was altered. Throughout the mid-1900s, the entire Kissimmee-Okeechobee Everglades watershed was ditched, dredged, and drained for development, agriculture, and to provide flood control. Florida's waters no longer flowed freely, but instead through a series of canals and flood control structures as part of the Central and Southern Florida Flood Control Project. Even prior to the completion of the Flood Control Canal in 1971, the devastating impacts of channelization were clearly visible. By 1976, these environmental concerns prompted the Florida Legislature to pass the Kissimmee River Restoration Act, which focused on finding ways to restore the fish and wildlife values of the Kissimmee River and floodplain. The Kissimmee River Restoration Project is conducted through a 20 plus year partnership between the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the South Florida Water Management District that share the cost of the restoration 50-50. 
The Army Corps provides the federal funding and oversees the construction contracts. The South Florida Water Management District provides the state funding to purchase critical lands and conduct the scientific studies monitoring the environmental changes in the river. After years of research and modeling, engineers determined that the best method to restore the river was to use the material called spoil that was piled along the edge of the canal during the channelization process and simply push it back into the canal, a process called backfilling. In order to track responses to restoration construction and evaluate the restoration's trajectory, scientists and engineers plan to monitor ecosystem components before, during, and after each restoration phase making changes to methodology as needed. This is known as adaptive management. The project began in 1999 and over the next 22 years, approximately one third of the channelized Kissimmee River was restored. 22 miles of the C-38 canal has been backfilled, returning flow to 44 miles of the river's historic channel and restoring approximately 40 square miles of river floodplain ecosystem. In addition, two flood control structures have been removed. Now that the construction is complete, the entire project cost has reached close to $875 million. All aspects of the restored river and floodplain are being monitored to better understand the success of the restoration project. The South Florida Water Management District's scientists have developed a comprehensive restoration evaluation program with 25 expectations that include physical, chemical, and biological attributes that are being monitored as metrics of success. Key components of the program include assessment of water quality, hydrology, river channel, and floodplain vegetation, amphibians and reptiles, fish and aquatic invertebrate communities, and wading bird and waterfowl populations. One of the most visible and charismatic components of the restoration evaluation program are the wading birds and waterfowl. Historically, hunting the Kissimmee's abundant waterfowl provided a long established form of recreation and income for the region. More recently, bird watching in Florida has become a multi-million dollar tourist attraction. The wading birds and waterfowl that left the Kissimmee when it was channelized have returned to the restored system. Michael Cheek, an environmental scientist with the South Florida Water Management District, explains why monitoring birds is an excellent measure of restoration success. Or one of the main aspects of choosing wading birds and waterfowl to do surveys is they're highly visible, uh, they're easily observed, so they can be easily counted and compared within the restored section versus the unrestored section in order to monitor the changes that are occurring as the result of restoration. So we've seen dramatic impacts so far, and that's only with partial restoration, meaning just the physical uh, reconstruction of the river channels and the backfilling of the C-38 canal. So we should see even more positive response once we increase the hydrology out here. In addition to the increase in bird populations, Scientists have seen the recovery of the aquatic invertebrate community, a crucial food resource for fish and birds. These positive changes in the food web are just a fraction of the responses that demonstrate the success of the Kissimmee River Restoration Project. In 1996, FAU's Center for Environmental Studies partnered with the South Florida Water Management District to manage the Riverwoods Field Lab and support the monitoring of the Kissimmee River Restoration Project. CES's education and outreach programs offer field studies and eco-tours via pontoon boat for students, teachers, and adults, highlighting the success of the river restoration. To celebrate the completion of the Kissimmee River Restoration construction, a ribbon cutting ceremony was held at Riverwoods Field Lab in July 2021. Accolades were delivered by the Army Corps of Engineers, Colonel Kelly, and many others. So I got the great honor to stand here uh, with a ceremonial shovel 
uh, that was here for the groundbreaking. So we're celebrating lessons learned, and you created a template for others to follow. And you didn't think small. You think big. As one of the largest ecosystem restoration projects this world has witnessed. You have demonstrated that it is possible to think, to invest, and to act at the ecosystem scale when it comes to restoring nature. The Kissimmee River Restoration Project is a testament to the ingenuity and the dedication of the people who have worked hard to get this done. I tell you, this is nothing short of amazing. And, and everyone here, what you've done is, is, is job well done. We are truly standing on the shoulder of giants here today. And we thank you for all of your hard work and really look forward to the ribbon cutting. The red ribbon represents the core. The blue ribbon will represent our partners in restoration and the South Florida Water Management District. Everglades Restoration is a joint effort between the state and the federal government, but under Governor Ron DeSantis' leadership, the state of Florida continues making major strides and in significant investments to restore our Everglades. These leaders' reflections illustrate the state importance of protecting Florida's wetlands that store, filter, and recharge our freshwater systems while providing critical wildlife habitat. The benefits of the Kissimmee River restoration positively impact the greater Everglades ecosystem and the residents of central and southern Florida.